<laughs> we just dropped some new merch for the summer. We got two tie-dye t-shirts with embroidered art, as well as a sticker of both designs. You can get them right now on pleasestopshopping.com for $25. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Pondering Spooky Tapes. In the deepest and darkest of woods, where not even the light of the moon can penetrate, two vile creatures indulge in dark delights and have conquered their comrades into capitulation. Now they wander these lands watching scary cinema, and there's a good chance you're next. Mandalore and Billy invite you to ponder some spooky tapes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Pondering Spooky Tapes. Uh, today we're talking about Cry Baby Lane. <laughs> Whoa, now this is a scary movie. So scary it was banned from Nickelodeon. Or was it? It was it, it was never actually banned. Oh? It was never actually banned, yeah. So, for those who don't know, Cry Baby Lane is a movie made by Nickelodeon. It was supposed to be a movie that would go to theaters, but then it ended up not going to theaters. It ended up going on SNCC. Was it SNCC? I can't remember. We literally yeah, just yeah, watched Nick. the original broadcast. Well, it was on SNCC. Sabrina said it was SNCC. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like so their was old Snick. Halloween block. Yeah, it was the old Halloween block, and they made the, this movie, this original TV movie for that, directed by Peter Lauer, who didn't do much else. Written by Peter Lauer and Bob Mittenthal. And that guy did Casper Scare School or whatever. Was it not? I think it was Scare you School. You guys remember that? Right? Casper Scare School. I think you have the Scooby Doo Scare School, which is incorrect. Oh, well, the Scooby Doo no, School, School, Silly Boy. Yeah, yeah. School, School, School. Yeah, no, that was the uh, Scare School was the the other one TV movie that would always fucking play on Nick. Oh yeah. Cause that's the one that's the yeah, one that's really bad CG all the way through. Yeah. And there's a mummy that raps. I remember this. It's fucking horrendous. It's fucking awful. Doesn't it have like a train that takes, I remember that movie cause it has like a train that takes them to the school. It's starring Jace Blankfurt. I don't know what he's done. He I hasn't think done anything. Both of the, yeah, I think both of the kids have done pretty much nothing. And Trey Rogers, but importantly, importantly, Frank Langella, who plays Archer from fucking Small Soldiers, because every episode <laughs> we do has to have a connection to that. Well, the the guy, um, the guy who plays the Undertaker is uh, the voice of Archer in Small Soldiers, yeah. and also he's in a couple episodes of Star Trek. I gotta, I gotta always mention that. That's the other connection. We don't have a twin. Do we have a Twin Peaks was, one? Uh, we do not have trials? a Twin Peaks connection. Oh, However, damn. there is one actor in this movie that we have to talk about uh, who has a small, like, five-minute <laughs> oh, yeah, role. I forgot about that. And he's a breakout <laughs> star. He, he's it's not even five minutes. It's, it's like it a two-minute thing. It was like a Bigfoot sighting of Jim Gaffigan. It was Jim Gaffigan. <laughs> and he said, cold cuts, I'm not paying for that. And then he drives away. You want lawyers involved? Man, come on. We're friends, huh? No, we're not. We're not friends, buddy. And, and then, then he fucks the, off. After that, the uh, the Undertaker went into the house and said, get this lady in a cheaper box. Oh, yeah. Pay for the, cold the Undertaker was like, get this guy in a cheaper box. They don't want to pay for this shit. So we're not, pay Dude, that we're guy not paying was an for an expensive asshole. box. That guy was absolutely an Everybody asshole. Everybody in this fucking movie was an asshole. Yeah, everybody fucking sucks. And part of that, though, is the the premise of the movie, which is conjoined twins separated because they were both dying and both were buried in different places. The good twin was buried in a cemetery and the evil twin was buried in cry baby lane. But to just go back real quick. Uh, the rumor that this is lost media. This was absolutely lost media. This aired once in 2000. And it did not air for another 10 years until it showed up again on Teen Nick. There's a lot of people that say that it wasn't, it was actually banned because parents were calling in and said that it was like too spooky, too scary. But uh, actually, it turned out that it was completely fucking false. Uh, the director and somebody who worked at Nick actually just shelved it and they forgot that it ever existed. And the only reason why people start like the the that Nickelodeon started showing it off again and like airing it again 
is because people on Reddit were going fucking cuckoo crazy caca for this movie. And that's literally it. So <laughs> so the band's story was a Redditor going, I think they banned it because it was too scary because I haven't seen it since. Yeah. yeah. That makes it a was lot literally more sense. Because this movie is... Uh, it's Are You Afraid of the Dark? But too long. I don't know about you guys, but I thought this movie was fucking boring. <laughs> fun, fun, fun fact leading into my information on the movie. And it's not really information more so as I'd like to talk about what also was created from like, oh, it was banned uh, around the same time period that people were talking about the movie being like lost media, a creepypasta yeah. surfaced. Oh God! Wait, like, wait a Cry Baby Lane, a Cry Baby Lane creepy pasta from the perspective oh of somebody who God. worked on the movie, and I'd like to read Fuck. this horrible segment from Please. the Cry Baby Lane creepy sure. pasta. No, the gist of the creepy pasta is basically that like this guy was a screenwriter who worked on Cry Baby Lane, and the head writer of Cry Baby Lane, or like one of the guys who worked on it, one of the other screenwriters, was trying to put in actual gore and child death because kids really needed ha! to be scared. Good for him. Which is oh, like it's like. God. Dumb as hell, and they like cut all of it out apparently. And like they were gonna put in like cannibalism and dead baby pictures, and it's so so scary. Oh my God. But I'd like to read, I'd like to read a segment that is describing what this director wanted to put in this movie because it's dumb as fuck, and it's one of the most horribly written things I've ever seen. And I love badly written creepypasta. So I really, I would love to hear that. Early on, Lauer posed an idea of the two brothers capturing a squirrel, putting said squirrel in a jar and slowly drowning it before filling the jar with sand and dropping it to the bottom of the pond. Soon after this was suggested, Sandy from SpongeBob SquarePants appeared in tree at the tree dome. Lauer also suggested in one scene of the movie for a man with a squid-like nose to take off his pants in front of the two boys and ha! rape them off camera. What? But heavily implied, Squidward soon appeared. Squidward soon appeared as a major character in SpongeBob SquarePants. Wait, Wait, what? It was suggested what that the mean? two B stepbrothers forced to live in the same house after the first one's mom was found dead in a shallow grave, her body heavily cannibalized by her own husband, a local weatherman. A show with the vague premise Drake and Josh started in 2004, <laughs> and the what? stepfather what the is indeed a weatherman. <laughs> SpongeBob is like 96. What the fuck is this guy talking about? Lauer also suggested the younger brother have a dog house in which he keeps various animal fetishes encased in acid that he regularly Cat used to poison his hop. mother to have sex with Stop. his abusive stepfather. As Cat told dog. by Ginger, the abusive what? after. Stop. Oh my God. Stop. What a stupid fucking creepy fuck. So they didn't, they didn't the know when shows came out. I'm not even done. <laughs> There's a little bit more. A man who captures uh, the souls of children in a vacuum cleaner and sends them to Hades, Danny Phantom. Oh my God. And then the last one, a robot who goes insane on the two brothers, kills one of them that wears his oh skin, my God. pretending to be the dead robot. brother at high school. My life as a teenage robot. How does Stop. that be? Oh, whatever. The last Doesn't line matter. of this pasta is, the list goes on and on. Nickelodeon knows, and they're continuing the legacy of Lauer, sometimes subtly and sometimes overtly, and there's nothing you and I could do about it. Do you want to see it? Stop. You got it. Stop. That's so much dumber. So when, when was that written? I can't find the exact source on the creepypasta, uh, uh, like the time frame of it, but I believe that it was written around the same time period. It was posted... In the creepypasta, one of the creepypasta wikis, uh, and I, I think this is a repost of it, in about 2014, 2015, so after the movie had released, but I think it was written pre then so i can't find i can't find like the og source on it of course but oh my god the insanity of it all the comments are like holy fucking shit no <laughs> <Yeah>. way <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I love this schlocky world around this. Like, it, 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 let's talk about the movie. Uh, the, 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 this movie. What was I going to say? The bullet. Uh, the bullet attacks the child. Bullet there was a part where that happens. There, there oh, was yeah. a bull where the child was stripped down to his underwear, and a bull attacked him, and he got free. He just starts fucking running around. Oh yeah, we went golem mode in town. He went golem mode. So this movie is very much like an "Are You Afraid of the Dark?" or a Goosebumps episode that goes on for way too long. As was previously said, the the concept around this movie is just 
what if they rip a route like a root out of the ground and the root contained the soul of the evil conjoined twin and it just makes the townspeople and the children evil yeah That's the entire premise I, I i can barely remember how, like it, how dark are you afraid of the dark would get but i was actually kind of super- hard because well mm. this this one straight up talks about dismemberment yeah but like are you afraid the dark had the pool monster and that was genuinely terrifying oh yeah dead man's floats pretty scary that was way scary are you afraid the dark had people like die like people would actually like nobody died in this movie there was there was a little bit of implied death when the when the undertaker fell on the ground and said check please but nobody died you think he was gonna you think that archer was going to die yeah he gets back up later he's fine i don't know they show dead bodies because uh he plays an undertaker. He's like they a do mortician. show dead bodies, but nobody, but no one, no, no one dies. dies. Yeah, movie, yeah. And dude, the they there is no respect for dead bodies in this movie, dude. <laughs> the the mortician is such an asshole. Like, what an ugly fuck, man. He sure stinks. This corpse stinky. P U. Him and like his uh, nephew Kenneth. <laughs> Kenneth. <laughs> Kenneth, we love Kenneth. I love we Kenneth. Fucking we adore love, Kenneth. In this house, we love Kenneth. Uh, what a fucking guy. Do we? Uh, do we want to talk about Hobbit Hole? <laughs> yeah, that part was fucking funny. <laughs> I thought it said Norbit because you can. This is like a fucking shitty TV VHS for him. <laughs> you spent Norbit Hole. I thought it said horrible Norbit shag. Hole. We, we should also clarify in in this episode. We did not record a commentary track um, yeah. because there were so many different variations of the movie. We watched the variant of the movie that was the original VHS rip, so it has commercials TV, in it. No, and like, there's no, there's no VHS rip. No, this it's is ripped. TV fr- no, broadcast. it's recorded from a VHS yeah. and ripped to YouTube. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's still we a had VHS the ads, rip. baby, and, and hosted by Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah, she makes a boy appear, <laughs> and Salem shows up once to say he has to shit. Oh, and Nick Cannon is there. Whenever we get back into the movie, Nick Cannon appears. What is that about? He just shows up. He's like, man, I love R&B, but you know what I like more than R&B? Cry Baby Lane. And then Cry Baby Lane resumes, dude. That was sick. He's a big Cry Baby Lane fan. They couldn't even record p- more promos with Melissa Joan Hart. They had to get Nick Cannon in there. They had two. I'm horrified of Melissa Joan Hart. She just kind of materializes a man and turns him into candy. Oh, and Mind- cannibalizes him. They, they also never said who he was. She pointed at him and said, this is Nickelodeon's original Cry Baby. And then it goes to another one. She turns him into a thing of candy and says the couch only has enough room for two people on it. And one of those people is candy now. One of the people is a candy bowl now. Any important commercials we should talk about? That that we saw. I like I like the sorry one. I like the sorry one is so. Oh, uh, that was classic. trouble. <laughs> the tri- yeah, that was trouble. The tricks rabbit one was. Oh, fine. trouble! What are you getting into? Trouble, dude. That was that just brought me the. What fuck was that? Back. Uh- it might have been Barbie. It was some like not Barbie. Oh, thing. it was it like, like a, a knockoff com- Barbie thing. Yeah, yeah, it was like a Tim yeah. and Eric commercial. Girls Club. It's called, like Girls Club. Girls something. Yeah. The Tim and Eric commercial was the boombox. Yeah, that was the Oh, right. oh but the, the boombox uh, did open up. You're right. It was the same thing though. It was like the knockoff there Barbie. Were two, yeah, wait, why were there two fucking Barbie ads that were r- one after the other? One was, it was like, a real FM radio were constant. Yeah. Regardless, I would say I don't think there's anything in the original VHS rip that you need to watch over the higher quality rip of the movie from no. when it was re- rebroadcast. There's not like an interesting commercial and the promos are, are are not that interesting. So you could save yourself 10 minutes by watching the uh, the rip on YouTube. That's just the rip from when they it reared it. Flomeless. No floam. My ass was sitting there in the ocean flomeless. Thing is, I think it was a 2000 broadcast, right? It yeah, was, that was the film even around in, was a yeah, film around in 2000 or was that a little bit later? Oh, absolutely. It was absolutely. But I think Nickelodeon doesn't have right. infomercials. No, they right? definitely had them. Do they? Oh, man. Flom no, like, Flom is a Nickelodeon toy. Flom, Flom debuted in like uh, 1994, oh, 1995. Yeah. No, it was not. Yeah, it I didn't was. Think it was it's like a Nickelodeon, toy. Nickelodeon Yeah, it's a Nickelodeon because it's um, Flom, Flom was introduced. And I know this because I know toys. So in 1994... Uh, Nickelodeon and Mattel worked together to make Flom as kind of like a like a separate thing to get. Oh my god, you're right. And then I think Rose Art bought it uh, a little bit later, and uh, Rose Art Rose Art started selling Flom separately. You're right. Yeah, but Actually, now it has no, Nickelodeon branding again. I know my slimes. I know my slimes. It was Jack Specifics that bought it. Yeah, I never knew Flom was like a licensed Nick thing. I just thought it was its own weird thing. Yeah, it was originally called Bubble Gak. Oh, I remember Gak, yeah. Well, Gak was also because Nickelodeon had the slime. So they were like, hey, Gak, Gak is back. 
Gak is whack. Gak and Flome and a couple of the other goopy toys were a collaboration with Nickelodeon. Yeah, Mattel and Nickelodeon. Well, shit, you know way too much about fucking Flome, I know man. way too much about 1990s and early That's 2000s so toys. I don't know why. I'm sorry. I'm a freak. That's absolutely fucking random. Did you do that random. thing where like, you made your own slime at home using like glue? No, like but one recipe. Christmas, one Christmas I had to, did you guys know about the slime revival of like 2018, 2019? Yes. I the had revival. to buy my sister a gallon of glue for Christmas one year because she was making slime. Oh shit. Yeah, there was a big slime revival. A lot of them, um, there were also a lot of toys released that would come with slime. Like once again, I hate to bring it up, but like Poopsie the Unicorn. I remember a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing that came with the, 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 ooze. the ooze. Yeah, the ooze. I had a Donatello with the ooze. Talk about Crybaby Lane. The <laughs> Crybaby attacks the town. <laughs> Cookie Dough attacks the baby. Cookie oh, Dough attacks yeah. the baby. That's what I said. <laughs> what a, There's oh, this, yeah. movie. I, this movie is so like, it's so basic and so kind of boring. But then the the script is so fucking weird. All the parts They'll of just like just drop. them interacting is <laughs> so strange. Yeah. The script is so strange. Like, there's just this this fucking little girl that knocks on the door of a what? Who is that? Well, because the girls are congregating. So yeah, this they're is, congregating. This is, is post evil infection. Uh, they're about to reveal that all the girls are about to get infected with the evil. Um, they just go like she just knocks on the door and a woman opens up and she's holding a baby and cookie dough and then she's like cookie dough. That's going to kill the baby yeah. out of, for no fucking reason. Sorry, I'm late, Mrs. Hunt. Cookie dough? That's going to kill the baby. They're out back in the Rambler. It's a college night. It's a, it's a really weird scene, too, because at that point, you think you're going to get more lore because it's like a... Uh, there's a reference to it later in the movie as well is you think you're going to like see the gaggle of girls get infected by the evil uh, because they're all going into this RV for I assume like a Girl Scouts meeting um, but you don't get to see anything beyond that they just go into the RV cookie dough kills the baby and then the girls are evil the next day like they they are there's a guy listening to the radio in his truck and it's like a gang of roving teenage girls are attacking the town and it's like oh fuck yeah. dude and then you get an awesome montage of them just fucking with people <laughs> there's a mailbox destroyed and I, I I don't I think it was supposed to be a postal worker destroying the mailbox but at that point, I was, was like, did it? kids steal the mail truck to, like, break mailboxes? Because I, at that point in the movie, I hadn't assumed no that idea. evil was infecting the adults as well. I, I think the issue with it is, if I had seen this and was told, like, oh, this was a later airing of it, because the first airing, they had to edit all the scary parts out of it, I would have believed that. It feels like so much is, like, missing from the movie. They, there are, like... It is, there are some creepy bits. I get, but it's like Brendan said, like there's so much shit that just happens off screen. Yeah. Billy said that it was going to be a theatrical release, right? I wonder if they had to just cut a bunch of shit for time. Yeah, I don't know how that would have made it in a theater. It, originally, it was it was going to be a theatrical release and it was going to get like, it, it had like a million dollar budget, but then it got a million they dollars. Their, well, because this was around the time yeah. that Nickelodeon was releasing. Nickelodeon was starting to movies. release a ton of like theat theatrical movies like the Rugrats movie and such. Yeah. It yeah. be more than so they were gonna they were gonna do that, but then they they said actually fuck that, that's a bad idea. They were correct. Horror movie for I mean horror movie for kids is a fucking stupid idea. It's also like I don't I can't imagine sitting like seeing that in a theater. That looks like a t that looks like a TV movie. What happened is they they went back gave them eight hundred thousand dollars instead to make a specifically a TV movie out of the script. So that's what happened. Uh, not a huge budget drop, honestly. It's not, but I mean, it, movies are always expensive, so it's not too surprising. Do you think if I went to a Jim Gaffigan show with like a like my own bootleg copy of this movie, do you think he'd, he'd sign, sign it? it? What if he, I brought him a cold cut? Do you think it? he remembers this? I don't oh, think God. he remembers it. I don't think a single motherfucker in, that was in this movie remembers, except the one the kid one kid who, who acted was only in this. The reason the reason yeah. why I think that Jim Gaffigan might remember this is because it's his first like live action role. He had done a bunch of voice acting prior. Oh, was uh, it yeah. his first ever? Like, is, is, is it, I believe yeah. this is his first live action role as himself. From what I can, 
from what I can tell on his IMDb, it seems like it's his first time being like a man's. Oh shit! I wonder if he yeah. does remember Crybaby Elaine. Maybe he has really fond memories of that line about cold cuts. I remember being yeah. on set, and one of the screenwriters kept talking about how he was going to add these babies pinned to the wall, and they had to keep taking <laughs> the baby dolls off of the wall. Uh, and then I was like, "Hot pocket!" And then I fucking lost my mind, and that's how my comedy career started. I do like this—the one scene where the kid gets chased. What the fuck? Okay, there's this entire fucking scene in the middle of the movie where the the main kid and his brother go into like it's like a ranch a stable why it's like do a they stable go or there ranch. so why um, do they go the, there the brother the brother the evil the brother gets infected first first yes. the brother the two brothers are hanging out and they're about to like race the train basically which is like a midwestern tradition where a train is coming and you're like oh shit i'm gonna drive my car yeah, really oh, fast they and do it. do that and um, right before then they say like the don't, man. don't think it don't say it <laughs> no they're yelling i'm a man i'm a man i'm a man i'm a man, I'm a man. Uh, the Say perfect it. affirmation. If you're a PST podcast fan saying, I'm and a man, you be I'm a, a man. man, I'm a man, uh, is a great affirmation. It'll fill you with power. Come on. I'm the man. I'm the man. I'm the man. Then you have to race a train on your and bike. And then you Don't have to race a train on your bike, and then you'll get infected with the evil twin worms, and you'll go to the uh, graveyard. The PS2 <laughs> train, hey guys, we, can't, do not, we can't not do not talk race about the train. The do not race the train. <laughs> Don't race the train. Please. But we do got to talk about the PS2, PS1 transition when the brother gets infected <laughs> with the worms. For a second, I thought you meant the transition to the Spyro commercial. There, there's this transition. Every time Year of they the get dragon. transported to the evil twin dimension, the evil conjoined twin dimension, it just fucking, the screen shrinks into itself and it does... It's awesome. It stretches. It stretches like a um, like a Final Fantasy combat, like getting into combat in an older it Final really Fantasy does. game. It really does. But instead, you get transported to the children of the corn, and then a bunch of children with gl glowing eyes just <laughs> run at you. Well, There's okay. Transition to the Hobbit hole. The lead up to the train scene leads up to the stable scene, where now the older yes. brother is also infected with the evil. And so he has to, he, he tries to quote unquote prank his younger brother. Uh, he strips him down to his skivvies because he gets like nasty. He, he bowl throws him into on. shit. Yeah, he throws him into shit. The younger like brother. Literal shit. The younger, a, I don't know what the fuck. There's just a pool of shit in the middle of the stage. I mean, hey, you it's got a lot of granimals around there. All the humor is kind of like Dan Schneider stuff, just without the laugh track and like not as long pauses, like the dialogue. There's even a classic fart joke in there. Too. One, only oh, yeah. one fart joke though. Only one. That was, that was some restraint for Nickelodeon back then. Was it? Yeah, that one fart joke is quite some restraint from that. I mean, yeah, airing and the same airing on the same channel that Ren and Stimpy would air. Ren and Stimpy doesn't have fart jokes. Are you kidding? It has gross Are you out. kidding it me? Gross <laughs> out. Were there were there fart jokes? Yeah, Ren and Stimpy, Ren and Stimpy was predominantly gross out humor, and it got even worse when they went I to Spike the TV and they released out. the adult Ren and Stimpy. I remember the gross out humor. I don't remember the fart jokes. They literally yeah. have a fart song, I Ren think, don't they? and Stimpy fart compilation. Don't you don't want to type <laughs> that in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a there's an entire episode called Stimpy. There's one where Stimpy's fart. fart fucking leaves town and is like depressed, <laughs> and Stimpy's oh, like, "Oh, you're right, Ren and Stimpy and his fart are reunited." Yeah, it gets like a suitcase and leaves town, and Stimpy's like. Depressed, like it's his son. Ren and Stimpy ex explosive poop scene. <laughs> awesome. <dude. Yeah. laughs> so one fart joke was a lot of restraint. Yes, it was. It was incredible restraint. Anyway, Cookie Dough, Cookie Dough kills the baby. Uh the the stable scene. The 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 younger brother is stripped down to his skivvies and he he's wearing red underwear and they just send a bull after him is one of the most insane things, and then he escapes the bull and then he has to go all the way through town back to his home naked in his underwear. But like af after he like golem walks to like avoid somebody and a cat like crosses his path, there's the insane adult party which I don't want us to forget the evil adult party. Oh yeah, I don't remember that. Right after, so because <laughs> the, the boat, bur the boat burning, they burn a fucking boat. There's adults drinking beer, oh, hanging out, and barbecuing, right, and they just fucking their eyes right. glow because there's a there's this goosebumps dog glowing eyes effect throughout the whole movie. Whenever they go evil mode, and they That's actually had the right. goosebumps dog. It was a black lab. It was like yeah. dark goosebumps dog. He attacks the fucking. He attacks that one fucking guy, and then he's like, "Oh my god, he's <laughs> gonna kill him." To 
Uh, he spends like the rest of the movie trying to get workers comp, even though he's not hurt. <laughs> yeah, I Gary. Like that guy. That's his name. It's Gary. Yeah, Gary. He uh, whips he the funny. shit out of that dog too. He grabs a branch and just fucking whips the dog with it, and the dog goes. Whir! The first you're gonna want to take your backhoe. A lot of people get all the way to the graveyard without starting their backhoe. <laughs> I'm just joshing you. Yeah. That's just graveyard humor. Please. <laughs> That's right. He keeps talking about backhoes the entire fucking time because he doesn't want to dig a hole for a body or some shit. I love, I love the idea that we have this like segmented discussion about the movie, and somebody's just gonna be like, "What the fuck are they talking about?" But you gotta just go watch, watch the that's movie. That's how it felt. Oh it's so short. It is so short. It's fifty minutes. I would say don't watch the movie. <laughs> I, I would say don't watch the movie. To be fair, it, it's really boring. But I would say watch the movie. I'm pro this movie. I can't think of many like. Goosebumps, sorry, you're afraid of the dark episodes that like would not be a better watch over that. Because so much of the time is just spent like with kids talking about kids stuff with weird dialogue. Everybody is so mean in this movie, too. It is. It's, it's real. It's real though. Yeah. It's all like the dad, mean. like the dad the telling dad. the mom, the, the dad <laughs> telling the mom that she's a helicopter parent, and then being like, "Your kids are out, our kids are out late at night, and they're like carousing around town. Whatever, dude, like ignore them, let them be. I'm not gonna go out and like get all sleepy and get into an accident." But then the dad <laughs> later goes out in the middle of the night to go retrieve his bike anyway. Like he does, yeah. I mean, the yeah, bike but is the, more the valuable mom... to this dad than the kid's life. Yeah, but at that point, the the mom was probably like, "Do something." He just wanted to watch monster trucks he did yeah. he wanted to be on his computer and watch the monster truck he was watching a uh, not grave digger it was awesome and a big undertaker poster though he yeah, did he well did that was uh, the older brother carl carl was obsessed with wrestling which is very unfortunate this movie was the most brendan core movie we've ever watched that's why i love it so much there's a big poster of the undertaker the end of the movie has uh carl reading pro wrestling magazine in the hobbit hole yeah and he's got like goldberg and chris jericho on the cover and i was fucking pogging out so hard and then he says life is like a wrestling match and then you clapped your hands and screamed. he said life is a lot like a wrestling match you're you're not going to want to take the heavyweight champion right away or something like that but also yeah. wrestling comes up even later when it's chi chi time don't forget about what chi -chi was time. Chi -chi we time. did not find out what chi chi time was was the big girl chi chi i think Maybe? so the big girl was named becky the big girl was named becky because right. the, the kid says becky and it was like a bigger girl and i think chi chi time yeah. was supposed to be you are going to get beaten up by the big girl time i guess so because you think her name would be chi chi then <laughs> the final confrontation is literally like this kid being harassed by these girls to kiss them. If and you don't then, kiss us, it's Chi Chi time. <laughs> and we have a spider in our mouth, by the way. Yeah, he's like, okay, fine, I'll kiss you. And then she has a spider in her mouth. So he's like, ew, gross, I'm not doing that. And then they're like, okay, well, it's Chi Chi time. And then this girl comes out, just fucking just pushes him on the, the floor and just think it. They kicked the shit out of him while he's on the floor. It seemed like something Brendan would DM, so like for some challenge funny. in a dungeon. I know. Like you have to kiss the girl with a spider mouth or else it's Chi Chi time. When Andrew <laughs> is running away through the cornfield, when Andrew is running away through the cornfield and he does like a half like scissor leg takedown on 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 Becky, the big girl, it it, it's Chi Chi time. He straight up is like waiting for her. He like sets a trap. Wrestling comes back into it when he fucking scissor leg takes down her. We think she's like dead and then he runs away and magically finds the good twin's grave. Because by the way, yeah. in this movie, they do the plot line of like the evil twin was buried at Crybaby Lane. They switched the bodies. Yeah. They freaked I, it up. Because the Undertaker sucks. I swear to God, that is the plot of House of Wax. The one with uh, the supernatural guy. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot where it's, oops, we we did a fucky walky and mixed up the bodies. Yeah, it, it is like the most generic, like, conjoint one. Like, I'm, I'm honestly surprised still by the... F the start of the movie being about like this dude that abandons his uh, like doesn't like the conjoined twins and just fucking rips them apart i was like damn no that's not what it was he Nick like he like stuck them in the basement and then one of them got sick he was like ashamed of them yeah and then when one of them got sick they both died so he's like i'm gonna cut them apart and bury the good kid in the uh, cemetery and the bad kids getting crybaby laned yeah this movie has a lot of uh anti-conjoined twin talk which is super strange a lot like at one point 
the the boys are telling the story again because the movie keeps telling the crybaby lane story again and again and again just make sure you don't forget yeah at one point he just he just says like and they were conjoined twins and the girl next to him is like oh gross like she's gonna <laughs> oh gross like, what the fuck man Everybody fucking hates conjoined twins in this universe. I mean, they back have then no they probably hadn't like, heard much about it either. Like you might probably get 60 not. minutes. Or, it wasn't like you had the internet. You had like Ripley's yeah. Believe It or yeah, Not Yeah, I was going to say Ripley's and, like, Believe It or Not 60 minutes. Uh, beyond, you had the Jonathan Frakes show. Everyone from Brendan and mine's generation remembers like, do you know there's this guy who fu- fucking turned himself into a tiger? Oh, do you remember like, the guy <laughs> who had I a remember. candle stuck in his head? Oh yeah, it's so fucked up. I, I really yeah, I really it, felt like this was um not even Are You Afraid in the Dark or Goosebumps. I felt like this was um I've been watching Beyond Belief Fact or Fiction. Oh with Jonathan man. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my god. It felt I like about a that in a while. long, long retelling from Fact or Fiction. And I was just waiting for Jonathan Frakes to awkwardly step it over a chair and be like, I Do you wish. believe it? We made it up. It was all fiction. It was never real. None of it was true. The Hobbit home was real. The Hobbit hole was real. Hobbit the hole. The only truth? Hobbit hole. Oh, I, I love, love the little kid. kid with a lightsaber and like He's awesome. He's freaking awesome. He's in the Hobbit hole. We love him. I like when he turned evil. But when he turned evil and he started saying my precious and he took the ring off the he, Undertaker beat yeah, the he literally, out of him. Yeah, he beat the shit out of the Undertaker with a, like a lightsaber and stole his ring and said my precious and then ran off and we thought he killed the guy. A ring of gold to rule them all, to seek the men to find them. A ring of gold to be their king, and in my power bind them. Excuse me? Oh, oh, give it to me. Oh. Was he supposed to be evil when he started like wrecking shit inside the Hobbit hole from outside? Yeah, what the or did hell? he just he do just, that? I he think was just he just fun. did that. I that think kid. he just did that because he just this kid, destroying that kid their little is, Hobbit uh, house. He's uh, popular now, eh? Yeah, he has a he has a you long acting career. That. Very, very, very long. Okay. He's in so many fucking movies. Mark John Jeffries, I think his name is. Good for him. Yeah, he's in he's in Nerve. He's in the original Haunted Mansion. Uh, he's in Nemo. Like it, it, he's got a fucking career. It still weirds me out. You can tell who has a career from this, like because they have an actual picture on IMDb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Isn't it strange though that they're like Lord of the Rings fans and they make a Hobbit hole? And they just sit they in and make like a Helm's Deep. It's like, here's our fort, the Hobbit Hole. Well, it's because they're in the forest and the... Um, but they had that, they had those, no. um, those little knight costumes everybody had. You had yeah. like the big, Dude, the big yeah, silver I was plate with like the dragon on it that everyone had. Everybody had the exact same one. When I saw it, I was like, holy fuck. It it's just like a $5 back, dollar costume dude. you could get at a dollar store for Halloween. Yeah. I love that it was a fake plastic lightsaber instead of a like a fake plastic sword that he was carrying around. Like something yeah. about him like mixing those That's up. That's very real. I it, mean, they yeah. And also they do reference Star Wars. Do they? they? They reference, yeah, they do. They reference the New Hope at one point. They also reference Hollywood Squares. Favorite. Yeah, they oh, reference yeah. Hollywood Squares. We got. They literally say in the movie, "We gotta get Whoopi Goldberg out of the cube." No. <laughs> yeah, no. They literally do say that. They say, "Whoopi, get out of the cube." Sister Act Two needs to be filmed, and she's like, "No." And the Undertaker gave that speech about how the cube was probably made by a government agency, and it now has no purpose. And then he threw mankind uh, off dude. of Hell in a Cell, sixteen feet through an announcer's table. Oh my god! And then the Golem kid. <laughs> start solving math equations to try and get to the cube <laughs> how would you all right let me ask everybody this question how would you make this because i i love this movie I, I i don't i don't i y'all probably did not enjoy it as much but i love schlock like this um i would have liked it if it was a little more either tightened up or had more to it it's in a weird length as it, it is it has first draft syndrome all over it there must there must have been something more what would you personally do for this movie uh, while sticking within the confines of a children's horror movie, what would you do to make this movie more enjoyable for a wider audience? I, I would cut it down to being like a, a, a goosebump, sorry, afraid of the dark, and make it like 25 minutes. Either you commit and make a full length script, because, right, there's so much missing in this. Like, either you commit and make a full length script, or you cut this the fuck down. Because 50 minutes is not a lot. It is not enough. And there was still so much that was just like, 
they talked about happening that you don't really see. Things kind of just happen. I love the boat explosion. I do love the boat explosion. I'm oh, not the boat lie. burning is great. How does he possess people? Like I, I don't it's need to ghost. know everything. I don't need to know everything, but there's a lot of there needs to have a show. Don't tell. Show don't tell. I think they were trying to. I think they were trying to say that the possession was happening because of the worms. But it was interesting that like characters had plot armor. Yeah, but they they there's just like worms that appear. They they just like appear. They step on the worms. They look down. They're like uh oh, and then they get possessed. That's all it is. It might have been there was like. Maybe the weirder version existed somewhere in some form because it was weird. It had like you had the beginning where the creepy guy is telling the story about the conjoined twins, and we're yeah. like, "Oh shit, this might actually be like this could be something." Cause, like this is odd, but then you know, Undertaker tells the exact same story again. Yeah, I did say could, like, after he tells the same story again, I was like, during during the watching, I was like, "It's gonna be a third, third time. You got to do a third You're time." Right. They do say it three times. The same fucking story, same beats, everything. It's kind of a... Uh, that's, that's what I'm saying. First draft syndrome. There's so many things that are just... Uh. Ken, what would you do? psycho on set who wanted to be more adult, they might have said, what the fuck have you done? And start ripping stuff out. And probably didn't have like a lot of material to replace it. <laughs> the so creepy like, pasta was oh right. Oh my god, Squidward was <laughs> maybe, real. Maybe it's, like, maybe it's like Event Horizon. And somewhere out there is the real In Cry the Baby salt Lane. Mines. Yeah. <laughs> Which salt mine houses the crybaby lane? Oh my god. There's the real one that was scrapped before any airing. They said, no, we're going to edit this down. You can't show this weird shit. I kind of wish it was scarier. It was more like a drama. No, that's exactly what I, I was going to say. I wish that they focused more on like spooky shit happening. Because it was just everybody was kind of mean to each other. Now they're assholes with glowing eyes. It's like, this isn't yeah, really that was That's a bit of funny. It wasn't like they were all nice <laughs> and friends. It's funny, but it's not good. No. <laughs> no, it makes it funny because you'd think like if the thing turns them evil, you'd see like they're all friends or you'd have like the Flanders character who's like, no, Hiddly do do how are you doing? And then have him be like an asshole. But everyone's already Everyone mean. Everyone already it. sucks. <laughs> like, they kind of did it with like the Girl Scouts and shit where like the kiss me or chi time where they were all like yes. in unison saying stuff. Well, the one goes like your baby's going to get killed from cookie dough. No, it, it, I think it should have just been like, don't, don't have them just be assholes. Have them be like, actually something's fucked up with them. The seance, like, yeah. like just make the seance scarier. I don't I know. I get it's for kids, but oh my God, it was so underwhelming. But like, what's the cookie dough murder threat before the possession? I thought that was, was before the possession, yeah. But you, yeah. I, well, I was talking like, about that because that was that was how you were supposed to understand that the girls were possessed. So the cookie dough scene happens because all the girls are in the RV. They all meet up and then they right. hear the crybaby because in the movie there's like sometimes yeah, you like, hear the wah, 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 wah. and then it's like <laughs> yeah, you hear that and then somebody gets possessed. What happens is the girls all go into this like shed. There's it's, a, it's an RV. The it's an RV. RV, they hear the crybaby, it cuts away, and that's it. You don't even know what happened. It, you just hear the crybaby, and the scene's done. Sprinkle a little and evil then dead mean. in there, honestly. I figured the Everything cookie dough was just a salmonella it. warning. It was. I've yeah. eaten cookie dough all my life, and I'm the, alive the cookie dough was pre possession. That was during like the hey, where are all the where are all the girls? Because that girl was yeah. normal. I don't know, man. The evil twin just does this weird thing where he like takes the main character and like he's in the grave for a little bit. And he's like, oh, oh like, look, look at my worms. Yeah. He's just a guy. He's just a guy. He's just a guy eating worms, having a good time. I honestly expected a ghost fight. I thought Good Twin would show up. What about one of the like most Kino moments in the movie where the worms transition to spaghetti and then the mom puts all the leftover spaghetti back into the pot? Oh, oh God, that's Dude, right. Dude, that's disgusting. <laughs> that bitch is disgusting. That I'm was the so grossest thing mad. that happened in this horror movie. I'm so yeah, fucking mad. She take it to spaghetti. Like they're they're done sauce eating sauce and all sauce and all. They, they there's just like a plate that's empty and except it has like the scraps from like somebody that just finished eating. Oh, she takes the plate, puts it back in the fucking pot in the middle with the rest of the spaghetti. What a fucking disgusting thing! What a vile fucking rancid thing to do! I'm so mad. And that's relevant too because that's the um the worm transition is when the Girl Scout girl does the sign language like the one American sign language moment in the movie, and then oh, she yeah. looks down and looks at the worms. I'm like scrolling through the movie because I was like yeah, I was and, trying to remember like I mean, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. what it was. Was, but yeah, and then that, it becomes the spaghetti. The this worms become spaghetti. It becomes spaghetti. I really like that shot with the older brother looking in the mirror. The, the 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 way that was shot, like that was that was pretty good for a 
Nickelodeon TV movie. There are good spooky shots, like the kids in the graveyard with the glowing eyes that don't move and just stare at the main character. Like, that's good. That's actually but, pretty spooky. But they didn't do enough stuff like that. There is not. There is also a full five minute hearse cop chase scene with Kenneth, our boy. Uh, but yeah. we Kenneth. love Kenneth. We love Kenneth. He can't drive. It's such a boring chase scene, though. It is. It is. It's, it's unfortunate. Actually, it's actually wild. I, I didn't think you could make a chase. It's like, that slow. It, it's so slow and it's so long. It doesn't fucking end. It's surprising. The insanity of the chase scene and then Andrew, the younger kid, gets behind the wheel of the hearse after that. And then he's the one driving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the 12-year-old kid is driving the car. But the, the the scenes with Kenneth driving the car, it immediately starts off with the hearse like bumping up into the air on two fucking wheels. Most of the fucking dialogue during that entire car chase scene is, you told me you can drive and you have your license. Why did you lie? Do you have your license? Like constantly. Oh yeah, it's five like, minutes oh of, God. can you drive? Can you drive? No, no, no. If you could creepypastify this movie, what scary thing would you add to this movie that w would be cut and the reason why it was pulled off TV? If this movie was actually banned, what would you add to make this movie banned. Oh, uh, dude. Anything's when on it cuts the table. To, when it cuts to them eating the spaghetti, the Andrew, the main character, looks down at his spaghetti and the meatball turn into eye. That's like it. They already did that in Scary Godmother 2, The Revenge of Jimmy. Yeah, but it wasn't It wasn't hyper-realistic eyes, you Also, dumbass. that movie came out after this movie. It, and yeah. Mandy, would you I, change anything about this movie? To make it like to make it get banned, to make it to make it have a reason for for the ban, yeah. Um, when they're like when it shows the possessed people and their eyes are glowing, just have like have the screen look all corrupted and it starts playing like a emergency alert siren. And it, <laughs> it, just, it holds in their faces for like thirty seconds during that, and their faces start drooping. Turn it into like analog a, horror. Yeah, that's it. Just have a scary noise play in their faces look a little weird and that, that shit would get pulled back then. The, I, I do think it's interesting how every jump scare in the movie goes flaccid because instead of using like an actual like impact, they use a stinger instead. And the stinger is always Hell's very Kitchen. like it's Hell's Kitchen. Like you <laughs> It's like Hell's Kitchen, you fucked up the shrimp ten would you do anything to uh to fuck up fi this movie all right take the bull out right we're not doing the bull we're still we're, we're not still, doing the bull we're, i'm taking the bull out we're not doing the bull anymore instead i want the entire time that he's in that fucking barn just you know i i said it like 10 minutes ago sprinkle a little evil dead in there just go crazy with it for like that one section and then that's when they're like all right we can't do anything like that everybody's just gotta be mean oh have it be like a slaughterhouse and have like a pile of meat and the meat starts pulsating but then you lose the horror of his little red underpants attracting the bull. Because it's a it's a fucking like dark, spooky little barn. It's just like just go crazy with it here. Come I just on. I just can't fathom. I I can't believe they actually wrote in the script that he has red underwear. That's what makes it scary. There's a big bull in here in your red underwear, so it's gonna be mad. I have an idea to really fuck up a fight this movie in a very subtle way to get it banned. In a subtle way to get it. Banned. The lead actor changes halfway through the movie. It's a completely different kid. What? <laughs> I mean, changes like a what different actor. Mean? Like it's a different actor. Like Andrew's actor, different kid halfway through the movie. Why would they it be how different? It. Like a little bit different or like obviously I wanted to be a grown obviously man. Obviously different. Not a grown <laughs> man. Obviously different. A completely different kid. But in the movie, they do not like refer to it as, as anything. And then you like build a story in the background of the original actor passed away while filming. Oh, oh okay. That's like right. the bull actually killed him. And then right, like, right. you swap him with a different actor. And <laughs> the bull, that's not, it. That doesn't, no, you're, you're not making the movie yeah. scarier. You're making a fucking <laughs> tragedy no, film. No, he's <laughs> right. That's That would work though. Because you got to look at the background. You can was, see the bull killing him. My question was not how you would make the movie scarier. My question was, how, how would you? What would you add to this movie to make it f to give it a reason yeah. for it to be banned? You make I, the creepy the monster one. real. Yeah, that you, you the change the cast one. and start a rumor that the, the kid was killed by a bull on set or something fucked up happened. The, the bull, bull killed the kid. Goring the kid is fucking insane. <laughs> Just like in How Uninvited, they lost like twenty cats. They lost like fifty <laughs> bulls during the season. The cat alive. <laughs> Keep the boy alive. Keep the Keep boy the alive. Keep the boy alive. Keep, Keep the boy alive. The boy alive. Keep the boy alive. <laughs> Dude, would you like it's a director's so commentary of this fun. movie? Because I think I, I would, would love it. I would love. I would love, yes. I would love to know 
what happened. There was clearly more at play. There has to be more because the movie went from fucking full length feature film theater to this TV movie. There has to be something more because the original script must have been like full length and they had to cut stuff, right? For the ads. Yeah. At least that's what I assume. I mean, just for the plot too, like there was just so much was just a weird amount of how slow conversations would go. And then like lots of yeah. shit would happen off screen, just be like remarked on. The first three minutes were promising. Like I was oh, just yeah, let that's, down. That's like, yeah, no. conjoined Cause, twins, yeah, he was, voice. he was telling the story. They didn't show creepy. anything like grotesque, but I, I know me and Billy for sure said it. I was like, if I watch this as a little kid, that this part would be like I'd freaking probably, me out. Yeah, no, the, it, it's creepy. Yeah. It's creepy. And then they talk about like creepy things. And as a kid, I would have probably been like, okay, time to switch the channel. The evil twin came out of the back of his head. Yeah. It was just like, were, were they the black and white? I don't even remember. It was just like, yeah, it was black little and white. muted. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was like, you know, just shots of like a creepy little house and they're talking like they're telling this ghost story. I was like, ooh, this is a little spooky because we thought it might actually be a corn shucker prequel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so tired of corn shucker. I'm so tired of talking about fucking corn shucker every fucking episode because of Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> Brendan and you are so obsessed with corn shucker. <laughs> it is like a potion seller was a slow art <laughs> I love it. About it. I love how bulbous the corn shucker is. I'm sorry. He's so bulging and bulbous. This- <laughs> Oh God! The the Crybaby Lane. I feel like I loved it, but also it has the same energy of the mystical adventures of Billy Owens, and it's not like your you know '80s or '90s schlocky horror. It's very. Uh, I, I I said it during the discussion. It's a very interesting pre post two thousands pre nine eleven movie. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Yeah, it is a it is a weird time capsule in that era. So it's like you see sort of like, oh, there's like 2000 stuff, but it's right before things get different. It's definitely interesting to watch, but I don't know. It's it's so boring. It's just really boring. Very underwhelming. I like I'm I'm probably more negative than you guys on this movie. I just I just kind of hated no, it. No, I could I didn't hate it. I was it was more just eh, that's it. <laughs> I, I feel like because uh, I, I, I didn't know anything about this movie until like last week. But like, oh, a fucking movie that aired one time and then they never aired it again. I was like, oh, it's probably that had be some fucked mystique. Up. The mystique added to it, and then I was so and let said it's, down. Oh, they forgot about it, and it's yeah, I see how they forgot yeah, about it. I'm gonna forget about this. The title sounds like some creepy pasta shit. Yeah, no, it's crybaby. Amazing lane. fucking title. It sounds so fucking creepy, right? But that's not how it is. It's just kind of boring. I don't know. It's got it's got the bones of a good children's horror movie, but it just like it it's so slow and like nothing fucking happens for a lot of the movie. Alone There's in like, the dark definitely beats it the fuck out. It, oh, absolutely. If you if you cut this down to fit into like a maybe and a half like a half hour time slot, you could probably do something fun with it. Even like, if it was cut like, down, yeah, it's it's like at best it would be a kind of throwaway. Are you afraid of the dark episode? Yeah, it's like ah, it's the it's the twin who possesses people. Yeah, God, the Hobbit hole though. I'm happy they didn't explain it. Hobbit hole still is fucking strange. It's <laughs> gonna be in my head forever. This makes me want to go watch the Goosebump show. I love that. It, shit. Yeah, same. That's what I was thinking while I was watching this. And at one point, while we were doing the commentary, we we're just like talking about fucking. Are you afraid of the dark? And episodes we liked. And I was like, man, I kind of wish we were watching that instead. It's interesting to watch like Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark kind of in parallel because you'll see like the actor crossover and stuff. Yeah, both Canada shows. So, but you'll see Are You Afraid of the Dark goes a little bit harder with it compared to Goosebumps. I think it'd be I think it'd be fun to do like a curated episodes of uh, yeah. one of those shows at some point, like visiting those and float. being like, God, this is so much better than Crybaby Lane. I mean, I mean, e- like easily. I already know what episodes I want to do. I want to do uh, the mask. The- the red guy, the mask, and oh, uh, red guy is dead Kinky man's the float, the blue yeah, guy, right? Yeah, 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 and uh, Kinky the clown. I don't remember Zebo. Zebo. As really long as I get to pick one episode, I I would pick uh, <laughs> the tale of badge because that gave me nightmares as a kid. Oh the, my the god, the tale, the tale of badge. The tale of badge gave me nightmares. For I years, remember I, that. I just remember the weird bog world he made and have yeah. nightmares about that and could not remember what it was from. One of my Dude. like core childhood memories was getting home from trick or treating and sorting candy and not being able to sleep because I watched the Haunted Mask Goosebumps episode. Oh, oh man. my god! 
They're both kind of fucked up, like the one and two where he gets the old man mask and he starts like aging. Yeah. Uh, water. The the camera episode was also a one oh, that I really oh, right. Was that yeah. the Ryan Gosling one? Yeah, it was. was. It? What? It was. Yeah. That's Ryan oh, Gosling. Shit. Huh? I guess it was. He's Just like how Leonardo uh, DiCaprio was in Critters. Oh, that was his oh, debut. Yeah. Was Ryan Gosling in an episode of Goosebumps? Did I yeah, yeah. not say cheese and die? Say cheese what and the die. fuck? He's also in Are You Afraid of the Dark, where they have the um there's a radio station that calls you to the afterlife, and he plays the kid's older brother, and Gilbert Gottfried is like the the secretary of going to the afterlife. That's awesome. Get your ticket and get in line. <laughs> I, I never I watched uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark as a kid. It's it's honestly a better Goosebumps, I think. It's better, yeah. I, 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 like I, was very, a, I was a big uh, Cartoon Network kid. That's why. Oh yeah. Probably. I didn't. I was usually we didn't. I just didn't see. Are you afraid of the dark often? And when I turned it on as a kid, the ones I saw were so like so much. I go, oh fuck. Yeah. Like, oh, come to this private school where you're gonna grow lizard eggs, and there's like a fucking beast in the dungeon. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot different. The best thing too nowadays is that Are You Afraid of the Dark is just on YouTube. Oh, really? Yeah, you can just watch Are You Afraid of the Dark like every single episode legally on YouTube. Well, you can even that. watch the compilations of every single one of them, one huh. after the other. I yeah. I really like children's horror like shows and movies because I I always want to see like how far can you push this and still show it to kids. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark by uh, b- b- Ballistic Gel Torso. Scary fucking movie. No, it's not. Yeah, it the is. new The new one? Yeah, I, I fucking <laughs> terrified sorry, that movie. Dude. Really? Hey, that movie hey, sucks. Hey, hey, hey. Is, it, is hey. it the big lady or the crawling man? It's the Me Tai Doty Walker, but I was terrified of that as a kid. Is the, that the thing that crawls after their car? Okay, if you don't have a reference for like the OG scary stories to tell in the dark, I feel like it's less scary, especially no, if you I have know, a horror I was, background. I, I have the book somewhere up here, actually, but I didn't find the movie that spooky. I, me, Ty Doty Walker fucking terrified me. The Sarah Bellows story is so bad. Oh, dude. it's stupid. I'm it's the same sorry. plot as the Goosebumps movies. All, all the stories were fucking soup in those books. Just the artwork was so fucking great. It's so fucking I don't think creepy. it translate well. I don't think it translates well at all. No, well, I mean, they're the most basic fucking ghost stories. When it comes to horror movies for kids, I think Caroline probably is the best one, right? And Coraline. Coraline, sorry. Coraline, oh, man, fucking awesome. Yeah, hey, I did not care for Coraline. Hey, that's fun, man. I saw it only a few years ago. I was oh, not enchanted yeah. by it. What about Paranorman? I still haven't seen Paranorman. Paranorman, I, I, it's it's okay from what I remember. The only thing that really stuck with me is the white stripes did the ending theme for it. It was a little oh, Monster House. Why the fuck are we forgetting oh. Monster House? What yeah. is wrong oh, with us? Monster House. No fucking shit. Duh. That's the fucking pinnacle of children's horror. Oh, oh God. God. Of it. A long time I ago. I love it. Hocus Pocus, I guess. I and mean, it's not scary. But when I. Hocus when Pocus I, is more fun. It's not yeah, really. Yeah, like, because I'm trying to think like movies that actually go into the scary, you know? It's it's Beetlejuice. Um, They say fucking Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is not for kids. Yeah, I it was know, then. No, it was, it was not. Then. He, he fucking pulls his penis and goes, nice fucking model. Nice fucking model. Honk, honk. Yeah, it's PG, though. Back then, it that's is. for kids. They could, take, they could deal with it. Uh, I remember uh, R.L. Stein did a movie for Cartoon Network, I think. Um, oh, the haunting hour. Yeah, that's oh, right. That one was that also a show. I think they made it a show later, but they made it a movie first with like Emily Osment. I think was in it. That's yeah, because they're more like teenage kind of geared stuff. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget that, about that Ernest. Kind of scared scary. stupid. You say Ernest gets scared stupid. I Ernest scared stupid is also one. Yeah, that is that's a decent one. That's the best Ernest movie. Aside from like Ernest goes to jail where he makes the gun out of the bar of soap. That's also a good bit. And it's like a full like it's like a full assault rifle, if I remember, or a pistol. And it goes floppy. That was a good bit. This isn't really a horror movie, but it's a movie I really like. And it's like a, a spooky movie for kids. Wendell and Wild by Jordan Peele's uh, Monkey Paw Productions. Very good. I like it a I've lot. Heard it was good. It's, it, it's got so much heart. It's really good. I like it a lot. In Scooby-Doo James Gunn, when the monsters are real, terrified. Oh, yeah. I saw that in theater. I didn't like those things. <laughs> Apparently, they had worse monsters that they then kind of had to redo. And so they didn't. That's why the CG on them isn't so great. Oh. So Matthew Lillard was spilling about like how it used to be an R-rated movie. At one point, like they had like jokes about it's like, oh yeah, Daphne would talk about how she was like faking it with Fred and stuff like that. It's like, by the way, the demons are like way more intense at one point, so they had to tone them down and like post. Why the fuck did we get so many Casper 
movies, dude. Because the first one did well, and then they just kept fine. making like straight to DVD ones. Casper, fuck Casper, that fucking stupid. I mean, he has like a little undead Caillou. That Casper, I wouldn't cry if he got sucked into hell. The only thing that's fucking <laughs> that I love about Casper is the fact that Devin Sawa plays Casper, and that's fucking funny because now I can't, I can't not see. Devin Sawa as the dad in um oh fuck what's the what's the yeah movie the yeah movie I have no clue what you're yeah. talking about. scary movie what do you say I can't believe me looking up children's horror movies gave me Fred to Night of the Living Fred That's oh we watched movie? that uh, we yeah. watched that last year Corbin may have watched it it was funny I think Night John Cena Living is in that John movie Cena for is a Fred fr he's his dad but. I, I think I, I'm trying to remember because I think Corbin made me watch all the Fred movies, but the Fred <laughs> that two one. Like Corbin. Uh, there's a part where it's shot and it looks exactly like it's currently a WWE show where Fred like goes into the ring and gets his ass beat. Holy shit. Do you guys think in 2023 Nickelodeon, if they were still doing like their Snick block, do you think that they would remake this movie and do no. a good job this time? No, <laughs> they baby lane. Else. They would no, never. Nick, Nickelodeon right now is in a very low hanging fruit. Um, arc like yeah, they're, they're gonna make a Poppy's Playtime uh, rip off. Yeah, that's way more accurate. <laughs> make a Garden of Ban Ban fucking show. Ah, uh, oh, Skibbity uh, Toilet the movie. Oh shit! Oh. <laughs> I guess that would that would probably be what they would go for. But they've been doing like an Are You Afraid of the Dark reboot or something. I don't know if it's still on. But it's only on Paramount. That's Isn't more it? on Paramount though. It's Paramount yeah, okay. Plus. I yeah. didn't know if that was Nickelodeon proper. I don't. I'm not caught up on this stuff. Nowadays, what air, what is broadcasted and what is just straight to streaming. streaming? Yeah, it's totally different. I miss like old Halloween blocks on like yeah. Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. They just don't do that anymore. It's also just like it's kind of hard to do the. Because back then, you know, people's kids were a little more insulated before the internet, and now it's like instead of Blue's Clues, you have like Markiplier leading them through the world of like Freddy Fazbear and shit. Yeah. And yeah, and like the programming on Cartoon Network and children's like television networks today, like if you look at Cartoon Network's programming block, it's very, very sad. It's like uh we bear bears, we baby bears, Teen Titans Go, Teen Titans Go, Teen Titans Go. That show's po really popular, isn't it? Teen Titans Go? So that, that must still be ongoing. It is crazy popular. That's such a weird show. It has an episode with uh Freakazoid and an episode with Beetlejuice in it. Wait, yeah. what show? Uh, Teen Freakazoid? Titans Go has an episode what? with Freakazoid and an episode with uh, with Beetlejuice. I'm looking. I'm looking at Cartoon Network. What's airing right now? It, well, it's Adult. Oh, uh, that's. But, are no, you looking but, at a but, live TV? No, or? like the airing, the airing blocks. Uh, right? yeah, oh, but okay. also, also really weird. They're re-airing on Adult Swim 16. Yeah. Dude, 16 was great. Weird. Oh, I love fuck. 16, but Dude, that's we were talking weird. about like kids horror things. The fucking uh oh, Halloween the 16 special. 16 horror special. The zombie so special good. scared the fuck out of me as a that kid. That scared the fuck out of me too because it was uh, yeah, people were just straight up actually, dying. Like, <laughs> people were just straight up dying and like they would lose limbs and shit. That was scary as fuck. That episode fucking rocks. I it think we watched so it uh, a couple years ago during October. I think we Corbin did. maybe made us watch it last again. Last year. No, it was last year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sounds like Corbin. My question with Teen Titans Go, because I know very little about it. The only thing I've seen are like clips over the years. And it seems to be like a mix of jokes about people who are mad the old show got canceled. Weird kind of like weird kind of fetish stuff. Weird. Fetish and then like stuff. weird. And then like long, bizarre lessons about the economy or like jokes only adults would find funny. But unless like really strange way they made a whole movie about teen titans go versus the old teen titans oh man. yeah there are versus. two teen titans go movies <laughs> i thought there was just was one i'm not that. surprised i'm not surprised because from what i've heard teen titans go is very popular so popular oh Kids it's easy it. to make it's got to be easy to make i mean uh, sure but it uh, the fact Madison that it's little cousins they they love that show i think my i think my oh no my little cousin's like 18 now he probably does his taxes or something <laughs> i hope he does <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully stopped watching that i mean you, you yeah it'll never be like batman beyond oh speaking of like scary stuff because we're, we're on the topic i recently rewatched re an episode of batman beyond that i forgot scared the shit out of me is it the episode where they become furries no it was the episode of batman beyond where um it was actually after that one where the guy gets uh locked in the ground and the radioactive barrels turn him into a skeleton that controls like dirt golems oh right yeah and i forgot that i used to have nightmares about that as a kid constantly because i was like oh god he's just stuck in the ground he's gonna send his dirt men 
trying to get me. Remember, there was the guy who like could phase through walls. Then at some point he started falling through the ground. And just said, oh yeah, he'll fall forever. He'll be like in the earth's core. We don't have to worry about him. There's so many thinking about it, really Batman beyond versus the other Batman. So many people die in that. And Terry's just like, okay, well, that's kind of what, what Ten was saying, like about how kids when they're doing scary stuff, it's interesting, like a Joker gas being a thing. Yeah, Where it's like, oh yeah, we can't kill them, so we have to think of a way around that. So it's okay, Joker like gases them, and like their faces get freeze, like frozen in this laugh thing, and they stare at the camera, which kids found way more uncomfortable than just like a guy falling over. Honestly, that's that's kind of scarier. Honestly, in Batman Beyond, people are just dying left and right. Like there yeah. are explosions where you're like, obviously those people are dead, but they just don't bring it up. My favorite part of watching Crybaby Lane was just the fact that now I'm thinking of a lot more uh, children's horror stuff that I watched as a kid. Yeah, it's great. This 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 movie makes me think about good things. Yeah. Scooby Doo Zombie Island is probably one of the best for kids horror anything, right? Yeah, but if you bring that up, I always got to bring up uh, Return to Zombie Island, where they make everything oh. quote unquote non canon and ruin it. I have not seen that. I I was like legit scared of zombies because of that movie for like a while. That's why the 16 episode freaked me the fuck out too. Just in like hat furries. Still what, nothing out. has changed. You won't come <laughs> on down to the bayou and I'm going to get you to Louisiana Furcon. Yeah, oh, when Jacques became shit, a big tiger man. man, I said not not dealing with Thundercats, <laughs> not dealing with any of this shit. I hate lion I hate anything like this. What about SWAT Cats? SWAT Cats was cool, though. That was an exception. SWAT Cats, the Radical Squadron. What a fucking banger title, dude. Oh, my God. I like when that crazy cat tried to make the city a biological fucking nightmare. SWAT cats is fucking bizarre. Thinking about in Crybaby Lane now, do they ever explain how those kids met the Undertaker? That they just like hang out at his house. No, all the time? We, we discussed it. He's the he's the old he's the town pep pep. Yeah, he's like the go here and tell scary stories. There was no discussion. You just said he's the town pep pep, yeah. and then everybody was like, "Sure, sure, man." Yeah, the town pep pep. You got the old man. Go- Goosebumps <laughs> especially is so like does that shit so often. Or is it just this weirdo who's friends like the kids? Yeah, love go- or love goosebumps is there's a red herring weirdo who's actually the nice person, and the lesson is usually trust the greasy man in the basement. The moral of uh, a lot of kids' horror is you should trust that weird guy that lives across the street from you. You should go into his house by yourself. I, I don't think I don't think I think the moral is more like uh, don't touch worms or they'll make don't you touch, yeah <laughs> or they'll make don't you touch, dump all the spaghetti back in the bowl. Yeah, <laughs> uh dude. With sauce and all, scrape, scrape, It's so scrape. disgusting. <laughs> I can't get over it. It's unpleasant. I kind of like the part when the kid was crawling around in the grave and he was like, ah, I was like, this is a little, you know, spooky, I guess. There's a there's a the real human skeleton right there. But then it's just like great value David Tennant eating worms next to him. Yeah. 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 And in fast forward too, which oh, is actually <laughs> pretty really fucking funny. funny. <laughs> he, he's like, you want to see my collection? And it just jams a handful of worms into his yeah. mouth and... And oh, fast like, forward, like fast super forward. fast, like blah, blah, blah. you just like, oh, oh wait, no, that wasn't in the movie. I was like, oh, do you guys remember the Hanna Barbera jump scared? I was that like, was no, that was a commercial. Ad. That was on a commercial like, for a half a second. I got so excited thinking about. it. I was like, they did do the like the stock scary stream, uh the stock scary sound effect during the uh seance at the beginning, and I thought that was funny. But they did do that. Yeah, I I I love the part when he's setting up the seance. Because the older brother is like, oh, dude, we got to bring chicks to the graveyard because girls love to be scared out of their mind. And he like, <laughs> right. yeah. he like plants a tape recorder there that's going to play like stock <laughs> scary sounds. And his younger brother goes, you're like Stephen King. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're like Stephen <laughs> King. Not bad. Poor genius. Regular Stephen King. Thank you. The, the part where like you actually hear like the 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 crying in the distance and then he holds up like the tape recorder why didn't they do more stuff like that in the movie yeah why was it just people walking around with glowing I don't eyes know, being that, was that, that was a pretty creepy thing it might have been more and they said that's too scary don't do that <sighs> who knows i wish this movie was better would people actually com- like call and complain about a scary thing on like in something the, that yeah, back then, back then they would absolutely i mean mm. like you had the whole simpsons episode about marge simpson rallying against like violent media and violent video games oh and that's right and then that's and then they turned her into pikmin and in the video game <laughs> yeah 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 um, yeah today they just like make a post on facebook the company ignores but back then they'd have like 
you know, hotlines and stuff. They'd call and yell at them. You are trying to teach my children that worms are real and that worms will get you. I do not like this in my household. And that worms are spaghetti. Worms is not spaghetti. Worms Martha's sick worms. of it. Martha talks in the third person now for some reason. Martha's very upset. Martha needs this fucking minute. Martha's had a cromulent fuck crustable of a day. Martha need drinky. Yeah. Martha <laughs> need drinky. All right. How about we fucking? Our, how about we peg this puppy? I got. Hello. Don't say peg. <laughs> Brendan, <laughs> you got on my fucking case for saying cat hole last time. Hobbit hole. Now you say that shit. Hobbit hole. Shout out to the hobbit hole. <laughs> Shout boys, out to the boys, hole. boys. Was this movie cool or art? Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> this is the hardest pick for y'all. There's a lot of boring talking, which is kind of art, but is that what's in love cool? I just have zero fucking emotion about. I just do not care about this movie at all. I, my whole thing is, I, I was so underwhelmed by it. It started off strong. I was like, oh, it was fucking lost media for a while. This is gonna be kind of spooky. Yeah, I guess I'll lean towards cool because there were commercials that were, whoa, what's that thing? That I kind of remember. Anna Barbera sound do effects. Do you remember? Do you remember Sunny Seal? Awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like Sunday the McDonald's dog. It's in that same brain territory where I should not have any memory of it left. Kenneth was cool. Oh, I'm going to say cool for Kenneth. Yeah, that was pretty cool because of Kenneth. Uh, we love us some um, Kenneth. He was Absolutely. smiling and doing nothing else. The most excited I got the whole movie was when there was a bumper with Salem from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah, and then he says, I'm going to go I got a shit. shit. <laughs> hey, kids, I got a shit. I'm gonna Stick cool. around. I'm going to say art. Oh boy, Brendan. I I the concept of this movie and the, if you if you take the surrounding lore around this movie and the the idea of this movie even though the movie itself was pretty underwhelming, I think the entirety of this movie as a full experience um is is in itself an art, so I'm calling it art as the whole experience. The movie itself if I had to d determine the movie itself, I'd say cool. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll kind of agree with what you said. The experience of watching like a 2000s straight to TV movie. And finding out that like it was lost media for a while and everything that surrounds that. Yeah. Is in itself art. Like, okay. I, I, I love when things are discovered, even if they're boring. The, the discovery of old media is going to happen more and more frequently as age goes on. And it's always going to be a little treat or a little delight, I think. So, you know, I'm going to give it an art as the full thing and cool for the movie. I, I guess it's funny that some things will just go away because they were completely unremarkable, but it has to be, it was hidden away. Like it was us. too scary. PSD is a hundred percent going to be lost media. Not nah, aliens are going to find that shit and then recreate all of us and make <laughs> us fight in the battle dome. Oh, great. Not again. Fight in the, you could fight in the Hollywood squares. <laughs> as a plot point for perilous podcasters brought to fight well, to the i death. thought you were gonna say that in the in ponder uh, perilous we would have to do a fucking episode of <laughs> oh, oh yeah a podcast within the podcast don't say that because uh, i'm writing no, it down that's not what i said i said hollywood squares what are you no i'm writing down podcast within a podcast i don't want to do that i'm writing down podcasters curse uh, this is the worst. we'll see don't pick up any meat microphones. <laughs> yeah, we're good. This movie was kind of boring. I don't like it we, that we much. I give it a. You no, know what? I'll, I'll give it a two point five out of five because it is completely middle of the road. It's got ten on Letterboxd. Ten. The next Kino sensation. If you like slop, you're gonna love sludging around in the slop hole. If you don't like slop, it's you might be a little slop. bored. It's, it's nothing. Pretty it's sloppy. literally nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> okay, it there was also nothing. the boat fire. I I will keep bringing it back up. The boat I fire. I love the is boat fire. Sick. I give sure, you that. But I love the boat it's fire nothing. scene. It's nothing. It it is. There's no emotion. It's the, nothing. There was no payoff for that. There's either. no slop. May I just say? Y'all are being funny and no, or no, no, no. What's slop? What do you think is slop? Slop is media that I want to consume as if I am a little piggy eating down at the fucking trough. That That's is slop. Not, I, I, don't, I don't think it's slop. Something you would give the TV pig because he wants a delicious fat and fetid meal. I don't agree with that definition of slop. For me, slop needs to be disgusting. There's slop and sludge. That's gore. That's like ah. That's something separate. Slop and sludge what? are ephemeral. Yeah. They are they are they are things in the air. What? Don't use ephemeral. Don't start using your fucking. My big ass words to is right me. on the fucking crystal, and I'm about to hex you. You're fucking. I don't give a fuck, man. Fuck this. Boo. 
Did I scare you? It's only a matter of time before we also get banned just like Crybaby Lane. Thanks so much for listening. This show wouldn't be possible without the help from our patrons such as Alan Diver, Art of Ogden, Beer, Bland But Funny, Boopooloo, Caffeine Addicted Chemist, Cheese Dreams, Christian B, Dasul Burt, Delling City, Dreams of Ice, Ducky Madness, DX Studios, Eric Scott Gillies, Ethereal, Generic Phoenix, Handsome Destiny, Hater 115, John Requires Lasagna, Kawaii Boy Toy, Leo the Geotech, Loudon Woodworth, Mr. Shirt, Random Diamonds, Rocco Man, Samuel, Nothing Worth Mentioning, Smeet Mono, Spherical Nathan, Teague, The Frost Ace, Winnie Rab, and Will 9455. We hope you had a spooky good time, and we'll see you next time. I said time twice.